Hey, welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is a YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic book hauls, comic speculations, and stuff for my collection. I got an awesome haul for you here. Got a couple of stuff from a bunch of different stores. And then I also got a, like a small collection of books that I picked up from someone on Facebook Marketplace. So we'll get into the Facebook Marketplace books first. But before we do that, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. It sure as more people will see these videos. If you have any questions what you saw, you like what you saw, you want to just say hi, well then why not leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, you like comic calls, comic speculations, comic collecting, you love comic books. I mean, that's probably why you're here. You love comic books and this, this channel is called You Love Comic Books, so why not subscribe? Become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. All right, we're going to get into the haul now. So I saw this on Facebook Marketplace. This woman was selling a bunch of books for like 30 bucks, and I was looking at them, and there was a couple of gems in there, but most of them, were, I couldn't tell. She didn't live that far. She said I could come check them out. I saw the books, and a lot of them were pretty dingy, but then I saw these other books, and she said I could go ahead and get those and mix them up, and I kind of was able to cherry pick the ones I wanted from the, the original pile I was going to get. So I think I made out pretty good. Uh, I paid 35 altogether for the books I'm about to show you. So let's let's get into it. Uncanny X-Men 498 with a cool Wolverine in, I guess you would consider that bondage cover. 496. These are kind of out of order, so we'll just have to deal with that. 494 uh, with uh, the Messiah Complex. They did, she did not have the X-Men one. The X-Men uh, part of the Messiah Complex has the first appearance of Hope. That usually goes for a little bit, but she had the Uncanny X-Men one, so that's kind of cool. So 494, 493. I'm assuming that's supposed to be Hope. That's a pretty awesome cover, I think. Is that David Finch? I think that's David Finch. I think he did all the covers for the Messiah Complex for every comic involved. So that's cool. And then X-Men 492. Yeah, it is David Finch. There's a signature there. I don't know if it's hidden on the other ones, but that's pretty awesome. All right. And then we get Uncanny X-Men 491 with a knocked out storm. 461 with everyone's favorite yellow blob, Mojo. 459, cool Alan Davis Storm. 458. 456. I have to fix that. This is a. I, it's, a it's funny when some comics are bagged wrong. Like, that's okay. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm assuming this is a storyline where there. Obviously, there's a. Oh, hold on. It's Kazar, Kazar, whatever, and the. Mutant Men or whatever they're called. And there's uh, X-23 when she wears that hideous outfit. That's kind of a take on Wolverine's hideous outfit from like, I don't even know when he wears that. Like in the late 90s or early 100s of X-Men. Uncanny X-Men. 453. Greg Land uh, Wolverine on a motorcycle. Uh, 452. Cool uh, Nightcrawler tail cover with a looks like he's about to bamf. That's issue 444. Pretty crazy looking Juggernaut cover, issue 430. Uh, Roided Out Angel, issue 427. Uh, 426 with Polaris. Pol Polaris. I don't even know who the artist on that is. That's pretty cool though. 425. She had these in like clusters, so I had to like buy them all. I don't know. It was weird. Because I would have probably just cherry picked the ones I wanted out of this too, but 424. And then for some reason, uh, 421 is bagged with two copies, not complaining, just, you know, interesting, but that's cool, I guess. And then issue 419 this is a pretty cool interesting cover kind of anime-ish i don't know who did this one pat lee maybe i don't know so that's pretty cool and then the best ones out of these uncanny x-men ones and so it's around this time period so uh 450 the first uh x-23 you know old new wolverine or whatever you want to call it. i forgot what's her name again you can tell me in the comments i uh 
had a mind fart. Uh, you know, I forgot what her name is again. Laura. Laura, right? First, and then the next issue, 451, first cover appearance in Uncanny X-Men of X-23. And like I said, this is where she wears this hideous outfit uh, that... Out, and it's a similar outfit that Wolverine wore, like I said, in that era in the 70s. It's hideous. A uh, cool uh, cover, uh, Uncanny X-Men 455 with a close-up of Psylocke. And then this is a really awesome cover of uh, 460 with uh, Kitty Pride and X-23. So that's pretty cool. So those were cool. And like I said, then I was able to kind of grab some of the books from that original pile. And like I said, when I saw them all, I was like... Some of these were beat. They were just gar. Like, I was like, I don't want these. What am I going to do with them? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But she was cool and she let me take what I wanted from that and this and just mix it up. So, Ghost Stories number, I think this is number eight. That's the problem with these Dell comics. They don't put, the, the Dell comics do not put the prices on it. But this is a really old book. It's like a fine condition. It does have this weird tear here, but it's complete. Uh, this is from 1964. It's issue eight. See what I mean? It's like this hole here, but pretty cool. You know, Dell comic. I was like, I almost didn't get it. I was like, I should get it. You know, pick it up. I don't have any of these. And I figured for the price I was paying for all them, not really losing out on grabbing it. Uh, this is like the reason, this comic was the reason why I got in touch with her. But like I said, when I saw it, when I got there, it was pretty bad. It's pretty beat up condition. Like it's like good at best. Micronauts, number eight, first appearance of Captain Universe. Now this character is like an ex machina type character. He's like, unlim I don't know, I'm nipping it or whatever. The thing about him is he, this comic kind of heated up a bit during the, Donny Cates run in Venom. They brought they connected Captain Universe to No. He even did some like uh what do they call that? Where you take an old you just change like an uh you take you introduce something new, but then you're like, oh, this actually ha uh, happened in this comic in like the 70s, and it was just some random issue of like Marvel Comics Spotlight number eight or nine or whatever, Captain Universe, and it introduced these like these bad guys that he fought, they were like these black shadow aliens and Doc, Donnie Cates basically, what they call it, like retroactive or something? Uh, ret retcon, retcon. That these aliens were really part of the whole symbiote no, like, I don't know. So that book blew up and then Captain Universe blew up. But I was like, I'm going to grant, I, I, even though this is not what I was happy of getting, but I was like, I'm not going to pass on it. It's low grade, but still kind of cool. This one's like mid grade. I need to just, in a better bag, it'll look better. But Daredevil number 178, this is a little bit of a key. This is the first time Daredevil meets Iron Fist and uh, Power Man. And you wouldn't really notice from the cover, but the thing that gives it away is uh, Danny Rand's uh, Iron Fist, the like, I don't know, his bandana or whatever, the, the, cloth is hanging but yeah so this is a bit of a key that's pretty cool and speaking of another key this one's in pretty bad condition but i couldn't pass it up daredevil number 78 first appearance of the man bowl so that's kind of cool uh this one's like mid-grade it's okay but i wasn't gonna pass up on an amazing spider-man comic so amazing spider-man 233 with a really funny spider-man versus uh tarantula cover this is it. Genuine, uncensored, and thrill-filled Spider-Man action, except no substitutes. There he goes. And then, kapow! <laughs> I don't even understand the actions, how this, honestly, how this works. But, you know what? Doesn't matter. Happy to get it. This one was surprisingly in really nice condition. Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. number five. Just a random issue. I think it's like, it's basically like a ripple, uh, a reprint, but that's Steranko art. I don't know if this is new it's new cover art but it basically just reprints like stories from strange ta uh strange tales with Storenko. so that that's pretty awesome and then this one was the i couldn't pass this one up either this one's a real this is the last one of the group luke cage here for hire number 15 uh really nice condition a uh, nice cut co cool cover he looks crazy there 
Uh, <laughs> I don't. It's not a key or anything, but it's in really nice condition. Early lose cage here for hire. So yeah, thirty five for all these books. I think is a really cool deal. It's basically a dollar, uh, like a dollar a book, or a little more. I don't know. I think I have like under thirty five. It's okay. I'll be okay, guys. I think I got a pretty good deal here. You could tell me if I did it in the comment section. I don't know why you would, but go ahead. All right. Let's go to the rest of the haul. I was at a record store uh, out in uh, Colorado, and they have some comics sometimes, and most of the time it's garbage. There's nothing really good in there. I found some things not uh, in my last haul. Again, nothing amazing, but still, I was shocked to find anything. But I saw this last time, and I should have picked it up, but I was there, and I found it. It was still there. It's a pretty cool get. Amazing Heroes, number 202 from June 1992 with an awesome Jim Lee Mall smoking a cigar cover. <laughs> I don't think the character smokes a cigar in Wildcats, but whatever. But the layout's cool because then you have the Dane DeVito Penguin split. And then what's cool about this uh, kind of preview magazine or whatever you want to call it, in the interior is a uh where is it where is it i gotta find it oh a preview to uh image comics now this is from 92 so this doesn't predate like spawn one or anything like that so here's the photo of them there's an iconic image of all the image creators uh here's the spawn cover it's kind of cool to see the spawn number one black and white and then this is that spawn preview image uh, Wildcats, that's cool, preview image, again, like, it's, like, I like seeing these, they're, like, not 100% correct to the final version, uh, let's see what else we got here, uh, you got Youngblood, Savage Dragon, come on, come on, turn the page, fingers, Brigade, <laughs> Shadowhawk. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and let's not forget uh, Cyber Force with a uh, three armed cable. I always thought that character was really funny. He has three robot arms on one side. So he's not cable, he's extra cable. So that's cool. Yeah, so I thought that was a really cool find. And it's awesome cover as well. So, pretty cool. All right. And then last books. Here we go. I was at uh, a second in Charles. And uh, I found some awesome books. So, let's, let me show you them real quick. This was awesome. This was only $4.95. Toxic Avenger number one. Near mint condition. Happy to get that. Really cool. Uh, there's a new movie coming out. Uh, they... Dropped a trailer a while ago. Peter Dinklage. I didn't really reveal what he looks like. Um, I haven't heard anything on the release, but I can't wait. And this, I always thought like the series. I had this as a kid. I bought the series. I was always kind of disappointed in it. It was like it was like okay, but the cover is always the the cover is awesome. So that's really cool. And this one was only three ninety five in a newsstand. This one's in really nice condition. This is the first cover appearance of Mr. Sinister. I thought that was a really awesome find. And uh, happy to grab that. This book has definitely picked up a bit. Uh, it's not like his second appearance, a third appearance. But again, it's his first cover appearance. He, he first appears in issue 221. And um, so you, you had to wait a little while to get him on a cover. And here I found this one for $9.95 in a newsstand. First appearance of Mr. Sinister. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is like a fine condition at best. Could use a press. The front definitely has some um, damage here. No, no, nothing's ripped, which is good. But I think, you know, I was like, at first I wasn't going to get it. I figured for $9.95 for a major X-Men villain, Mr. Sinister is going to pop soon because I think he'll be part of the X-Men 97 the rumor is he'll be the main villain in the beginning of the X-Men movie run. So this character will probably be a, an important... They've, like, hinted at him being in the movies for years. They dropped, kind of, like, dropped his name a little bit. Never really went anywhere. 
but this is always a good issue to get. And it's also an awesome Mark Silvestri Havoc vs. Wolverine cover. So happy to get that. All right, last three books. But before I get into them, do me a favor, smash that like button. Um, if you have any questions, what you start, leave a comment. If you like the type of videos, you want to see more of them, hit that subscribe button, become part of your little conversation. I got one thing to show you guys before I show you the last three books. Found this at a uh, five below for four ninety five. I couldn't believe it. Now the thing is, uh, let me see if I can hold on, show this better. So it's He Man, Masters of the Universe fortieth anniversary edition. Let's see, pretty cool. And uh, you know, I, I was like shocked to see it at five below. Now five below, if anyone remembers. Ross is definitely taking the place year, uh, for now when it comes to like finding cheap figures off, off, you know, off, I don't know, discontinued or whatever you want to call it, uh, liquidated or, you know, finding awesome Marvel Legends for super cheap. But we used to find Marvel Legends, Black Series, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars classic figures, whatever you want to call them, at five below. I mean, I got so many different awesome figures there years ago. They would just show up at some point. The Guardians of the Galaxy figures were there, the Marvel Legends version. And then it stopped. Uh, Five Below stopped d doing that. They didn't want to be like an Ollie's or anything like that. And they just started selling like garbage that they just sold. So it was like that value of Five Below uh, kind of disappeared. You're just buying like junk, you know. But to, So I was shocked to see this here. It, was, it felt like old school Five Below. So that's pretty cool. And again, cool artwork on the back. That's awesome. So, and then there's Skeletor and a bomb, just in case you're like, meh, meh, he man. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Last three books. Mad Max Fury Road got this for cover price. This is the first appearance of Furiosa in comics and on the cover. This book picked up a bit when they announced a Furiosa movie and the trailer drop. This book will probably pick up again. Pretty cool. Happy to grab that. Paid $9.99 for this, probably more than I wanted to, but I figured, I'd never seen this before, I figured I'd pick it up. All new Wolverine number four, variant edition of uh, X-23, all new Wolverine, smacking Deadpool in the, the, this is the meme from the Batman smacking Robin, which comes from an old World's Finest comics from like the early 60s or something like that. I think it's like issue 138 or something like that of World's Finest. I don't know. Look it up. It's a, But that meme has been kind of recreated. But I figured pick this up because there is rumors she's going to be in Deadpool 3. That there's supposedly going to be variants Wolverine in Deadpool 3. And the, the character who played her in Logan is like... She's like almost 20, I think, now. So she'd be perfect to play this character now as like she is in this ser in this series. So who knows? Maybe she'll smack Wolver <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> and this book will be gold. Gold. If not, it doesn't matter. It's a cool comic to have. I like the cover. It made me smile. All right, last book. Got this one for six. Fantastic Four, 209. The first appearance of Herbie the Robot. And also the first time John Byrne draws the Fantastic Four in the Fantastic Four comic. This is the direct edition. It's kind of funny. It seems like the direct edition has become more desirable because people finally realized, especially in 1979, that the, the bar going across means this was sold only in like comic stores or something like that, not on a newsstand. And the... There were less of these. Now, the thing is, the theory about the newsstand ones still being more desirable, even though their print runs higher, is just that, like, to find a Fantastic Four 209, let's say, in the direct edition in really nice condition is probably easier to get than to find a newsstand version because people would mangle them, they would bend them. You know, they would flip through those newsstands or those comic spiral things that, you know, you would flip there and bend the spines as you were looking for the books. So, whatever. But happy to grab this. Really awesome find. Uh, I just let go of my 209 like a week ago, uh, whatever. Got a pretty nice 
don't complain. Uh, <laughs> and the and I, it was the newsstand version of that, and I was happy to get this to you know keep this in my collection for now. Uh, and the funny thing is, I found it at the same comic store, at the same exact place that I bought the one I just let go, uh, like a year or two ago. I bought that book at the same price for just six bucks, and I didn't think it would still be there. But his boxes are like buried or something. I don't know. So I had to like move a box and a box to get to it. I guess no one's going through them. So happy to grab that. So that was awesome. So yeah, this was a pretty cool haul. Found lots of cool stuff, you know. Obviously, the uh, these three books are awesome. The Uncanny X-Men 221 and 239 and the first appearance of Toxic Avenger. That's pretty awesome at awesome prices. This is a fun book to get. Luke Cage, classic Luke Cage in decent condition. You know, these were fun to get. Bad condition, but happy to get it anyway. Cool, uh, you know, minor key that might become a bigger key depending on what direction the the shows go at Disney+. Plus. Cool key to have, low grade, but whatever. Just fun monster horror, whatever you want to call this, from the early 60s. And then just a bunch of awesome X-Men books, you know, just so pretty cool. So, yeah, happy to get these books. I think this was a great haul. A lot of good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you haven't done it already, do me a favor. Hit that like button. If you have any questions on what you saw in this video, leave a comment and I'll get back to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, you love comic books, you love comic collecting, comic book speculation, comic book calls, and all that jazz, you just love comic books in general, you're at the right place, smash that subscribe button. I'll become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.